three, two, one. Hey, I'm State Representative Antonio Parkinson and welcome back to the Tennessee Black Caucus Weekly. We're excited to have you and we appreciate each and every one of our viewers. This week, we got another superstar coming before you. She is none other than State Senator Katrina Robinson. And before we bring her on, I want you to watch this. I share in the sentiments of my colleagues from, from Davidson County as to how we ended up here on this bill. Um, and just so we can rewind a little bit, critical race theory explores social, cultural, and legal issues as they relate to race and racism. At a time where our country is in constant unrest due to the residue and the evolved perpetuation of white supremacy, of dehumanizing black people, of us having to live a life hinged upon race, this is a huge step in the wrong direction. Better get a grossly egregious approach to further asserting supremacy and breathing more life into racism. Critical race theory is rooted in critical theory, which argues that social problems are influenced and created more by social societal structures and cultural assumptions than by individual and psychological factors. How ironic that a body made up of a supermajority of white privileged men can determine whether even my grandchildren can see reflections of themselves in the history lessons that they have in their schools, to even feel a sliver of significance in their existence. Now, excuse me if I abandon my eloquence in expressing my opposition to this legislation, but I am highly, deeply, and profoundly offended by this. This legislation does not, in fact, target critical race theory specifically, but Section 51 only specifies what truths in American history should be hidden. If you look at the makeup of this body, you see three people represent an entire population and generations of people affected by this legislation. Though 17% of Tennessee is black, representation in this body only makes up 9% of the Senate. When I sit in this seat as one of those only three black senators in this body, I may represent three-fifths of a person to some people, but in actuality, I represent 1.14 million black people in Tennessee who deserve to be counted in our history. And contrary to uh, the gentleman from Shelby County's belief, Juneteenth has not been perpetuated as a date that began American history, but one that ascribes the beginning of the black experience in America. Just a few weeks ago, I had a bill on this floor for black history. There are members in this body who played all kind of games and performed elaborate procedural gymnastics concerning with members of the House to kill that bill to enhance black history curriculum for our children. And now we see why. We would rather hide the truth while our country burns in the fire of racial and social injustice, leaving nothing but ashes for our children for the sake of politics. What about human decency? What about accountability? What about honesty? What about transparency? What about empathy? Some of this bill says we should have impartial discussions about race. Impartiality means to treat both sides equally, fair and just, unbiased, unprejudiced, non-discriminatory. Now, pardon me, but in the history that I, I sought to learn on my own because I didn't learn it in school, but that history, all of those aforementioned words are completely non-synonymous with the black experience in this country. And that story needs to be told. It's disheartening to, to think that I sit in a body with someone who does not respect the inclusion of my history, of my senator from Davidson County's history, of my other colleague from Shelby County's history, that you all do not respect that inclusion in the education of our children, that you would rather skirt accountability and truth in teaching history to our children. This isn't common core math. This isn't sex ed. This isn't standardized testing. This isn't a US civics test we, we make kids take to graduate from high school. This is about essentially erasing real history from education. We went through years of arguing that we needed to preserve history by maintaining a bust in this hallway that I have to look at when I get off the elevator of a person who is responsible for the murder of hundreds of black soldiers. 
but yet we want to hide history now. It's appalling. Politics and collegiality aside, I feel personally offended and disrespected by this bill. Not even this bill, but the changes that have been made to the bill that we actually passed. And so I just ask that out of respect for history, out of respect for our children, and out of respect for your colleagues that you vote no on this bill. And welcome back to the show. Uh, again, I'm State Representative Antonio Parkinson, Chairman of the Tennessee Black Caucus of State Legislators. And we have our one and only superstar. She is State Senator Katrina Robinson. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. Thank you All for right. having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you. It took you long enough to get here. <laughs> but I had a long for, road. Right, right. I had a long road you, to travel. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, number one, let me say this. Um, um, I, I truly appreciate you being here as, as a state senator. You're an amazing person. I want to say it publicly. I want to say it publicly. <laughs> she is an amazing person and an amazingly intelligent person. And she is truly an asset to the state senate of Tennessee. And she is one, uh, and, I, and I raised her, y'all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but she is one that, that, that speaks truth to power. And we got to have that right here at the Tennessee legislature. So welcome to the Tennessee Black Caucus Weekly. Thank you so much, Day Rip. I really appreciate the kind words. It really means a lot to me just to be here to be able to share with you and the rest of our followers about what we're doing here. I think it's very important that we engage those at home so they know that we're, that we're fighting on their behalf. And so right. I appreciate you having me here. Well, well we're excited to have you. And, you know, uh, we just played this clip. Uh, and, you know, we, we just came off the ropes with this one, this episode. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, just as of yesterday, you know, we were in, 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 I honestly consider it one of the fights of our lives, you know, in, in you know, defending or fighting so that um, our children and educators are able to tell the truth about what's happening you know, what has happened in our history here in, in Tennessee and in the United States. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's important that people know what goes on behind the scenes. So just to rewind and give you some mm -hmm. context to the video that you just showed, um, a few weeks ago I had Senate Bill 1101. It was carried by me in the Senate and uh, Representative Hakeem in the House. And I passed it through a committee. It was a bill that basically said that we need to teach more black history in our mm -hmm. schools because our standards have not been updated as it relates to black history in quite some time. And so there was emphasis placed on those transitional grades in the fifth grade and the eighth grade so that our students got more content as to what black, black people have contributed to our history, mm -hmm. what uh, our experience has been here from slavery until now. Uh, as uh, Senator Ackberry said in committee that day, it, you know, s black people are more than just the civil rights movement, slavery, and Barack mm -hmm. Obama. And so our kids need to know that. So it went through committee. It came out 6 to one meaning six yeses, two no's, mm -hmm. and one passed. And then it came to the floor. Meanwhile, on the House side, they had already approached the House sponsor and said, hey, if you present this in committee, it's not going to pass. We're going to mm -hmm. general sub it. You can either take it off notice or that'll be what you'll face. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I called him on the phone. I said, no, run my bill. Right. right. And so they still gin up the bill. Wait, so, wait, wait a minute. You know, so we, we, we like to speak in layman's terms. Oh, I'm Don't sorry. I'm sorry. So basically they saying, killed it. What is, what is gin sub? <laughs> yeah. Gin sub? What is yeah. that? Was that a drink? No, it's gin sub. General sub. Right. Which means that. They killed the bill. They killed the bill. Right. right. And so um, after they did that mm -hmm. uh, on the House side, I still ran my bill mm -hmm. because I thought it was important that people know mm -hmm. who is actually for you and who is against you. Mm -hmm. And so I ran the bill on the floor and there was like this whole um, orchestrated effort to kind of kill it mm -hmm. procedurally so that they didn't look bad. Let, let's pause right there and, and, and cause, because I think it's important for, for the people to know that Sometimes we, we will run legislation and we know that they're, they're not really supportive of the legislation, mm -hmm. but I always say this is chess, not checkers. Exactly. And, and, and sometimes it's important to put those things out front so that people can see publicly, you know, the, the culture that we're in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, continue on. So um, when we got to the floor, mm -hmm. the chairman of the education committee who was also the sponsor of this particular mm -hmm. bill uh, or the amended bill mm -hmm. um basically Senator Brian Kelsey, we'll yes ahead. yeah okay mm -hmm. we're gonna call names so basically mm -hmm. he brought an amendment that pretty much took everything out of what we were doing basically okay. it made my bill non-effective right and so we worked to try to get it right and brought it back to the floor um they tried to get their amendment on they did mm -hmm. 
But then when we came to the vote, you saw it was split down the middle. There were 16 uh, yes to 17 no's. Mm -hmm. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I do. And so I thought it was important for us to see that mm -hmm. in black and white, mm -hmm. who's voting for this and who's yeah. voting against it. And so here we are, we come back with another bill that had nothing to do mm. with black history, had nothing to do mm. with racism education. Right. And now we have made it where we want to further suppress education as it relates to racism in our country. Right. And again, we have the same sponsor. And so that that's why I was so moved yesterday to just even get up and because I don't normally talk like that mm -hmm. I don't I, normally I'm very collegial and I don't mm -hmm. you know crack the whip very often unless it's in committee mm -hmm. but on the floor I felt like it needed to be said because you know y'all get a little live in the house yeah but yeah, in the we, senate we kind of go to sleep so yeah right we, so we, man <laughs> dysfunctional totally dysfunctional so now. yes yeah. but it, it mm -hmm. needed to be said and mm -hmm. it, it needed to be heard mm -hmm. on both what, sides what, 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 tell, tell us now now we're we're outside of the video now. We're with you right here. On right. The spot. What did that mean to you? What 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 did that 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 move that they made? And 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 so everybody's clear. It, the move was to basically force teachers by law to water down the history of of black people in America and black people in the state of Tennessee while at the same time uh, finding a way to show the good side of what they've done, of what, you know, uh, white people have done, and we're going to be completely uncut and honest, um, in, in those instances such as slavery and other, other things. And, and, and we'll get to my colleague Justin Lafferty's comments about mm -hmm. the three-fifths compromise uh, in just a second also. Tell me what that, what that meant to you. How did that strike you? So, Justice Rep. Lafferty uh, decided to make up some history on the floor. They did the same thing yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so basically it was said that Juneteenth was made up. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, to me, it, it's just part of, part, of, part of the thought process when we get here. As I said yesterday, we have three black senators. Out of 33 senators, mm -hmm. we got three black senators. Mm -hmm. And for me to sit on that floor with two other black women, and for you to tell me my history doesn't count, my children's history doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Rep. Parkinson's history doesn't count. That's disrespectful to me. That's yeah. disrespectful to me, to the people that have elected us to be here so that we can make sure that they're included. It just, it, it rubbed me really, 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 really wrong. And, and, and rightfully so. And, and I'm sitting here um, uh, feeling, feeling that emotion right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, to think that, uh, or to know rather that, um, you know, our colleagues who, you know, every day in the hallway speak and hug you and, and this that, and other, but when, when it comes time for uh, creating legislation or, or policy that will have a major impact on, li on your life and the lives of your children, it just, it just, it, 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 it saddens me, mm -hmm. it, seriously, it really does. Uh, you know, because this, this to, to, to put up a, a cloak over you know the real truth in, in of the things that have happened in history is 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 um, I, I would say is just morally uh, irresponsible. irresponsible and that's that's the that's the best way I can put it in. you know yesterday I was talking with someone and we were talking about what this is is like mm -hmm. and it's kind of like I, I come and stab Rep Parkinson and he has this huge gaping hole in his chest and I said, well, let's just put a Band-Aid over. It'll mm -hmm. be all right. It'll be better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But me as a nurse, I know mm -hmm. if I don't do anything with it, if I don't wash that wound out, if mm -hmm. I don't stitch it up, if I don't mm -hmm. bandage it correctly, it's going to get infected, it's going to fester, and it's going to take over. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what we, we've done. We pretty much just pull the curtain mm -hmm. on history because we, we want to throw the rock and hide our hands. That's mm -hmm. really what we want to do. We don't want to take accountability for where we are in a climate in this country, country racially. And also, I just want to go back to the fact that this is not just about black versus white. Mm -hmm. We're talking about all races. So right. whether we're talking about 9-11, mm -hmm. whether we're talking about the Holocaust, mm -hmm. we're talking about the China virus, mm -hmm. like we're talking about races all across mm -hmm. the board. Now, it's, it's because it's so black and white here in the Senate, mm -hmm. that's what the conversation pretty much revolved around. But we, we, we're pretty much escaping everybody except for mm -hmm. white Anglo-Saxon People. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I do, and and it's, it's interesting because during that during that committee uh, conversation, that committee debate, I was uh, asking uh, the sponsor of the amendment and the sponsor of the bill on the House side 
So, you know, if, 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 if they are to give impartial, have impartial discussions about these historic events in these classrooms and, and they are to show the good on each side, then I, I ask, so what, to explain to the teachers then, the educators out here, how to explain the good about the two individuals that flew the planes into those World Banks or the World Trade Centers. Explain to these educators how they are to explain the good to these uh, students uh, about Hitler and mm -hmm. the orchestration of the Holocaust where millions of Jews and Polish individuals were killed and murdered, gassed. You know, explain how uh, these teachers are to explain how the good about the slave master that was tying an individual to a tree or those that lynched individuals or even Derek Chauvin who, who killed George Floyd in front of every American um, on, uh, you know, the internet and, and, t and TV. What show, so how do you explain the good in that? You can't. You, you, and, and so, and which brings me to my point, and so I, I think that's the point, is because you won't be able to explain the mm -hmm. good in some of this, so you won't be able to teach it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we're doing. We're putting a muzzle on our teachers. I mean, right. I, I heard Senator Kelsey say yesterday in committee, don't put words in his mouth. We're well, taking the words out mm -hmm. of the mouths of our teachers who are in charge of educating our kids. I mean, if you think about it, teachers spend more time with our kids than the parents do. Mm -hmm. Given the parents work all day, they come home, they raise their kids, they go to sleep, they probably spend four hours a day with these kids where the teachers have them all day long. And so this is a chance for us to be more than impactful with our children by allowing them, black and white, to understand why we are, why you look on the TV and see somebody on trial for murdering a black man today. Why is that? Because we come from this. Mm -hmm. And this is what you need to do to repair this moving right. forward. Your generation is now responsible for repairing this rift in our nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there, there's a, a, an extreme discomfort when it comes to having conversations about race here oh, in yes. the Tennessee legislature. Why do you think that is? I told uh, Representative Dixie, or uh, Chairman Dixie, um, we were on a call one day and I said, the quickest way to kill anything in this legislature is to put the word black in it. Mm -hmm. um, I had a bill about doulas and mm -hmm. I saw Representative uh, Lamar was presenting it for me in the mm -hmm. House. And everybody was like gung-ho, mm -hmm. you know, while she was talking about the medical side of it, blah, blah, blah. When she gets to talking about black maternal mortality, mm. and you can see the faces just change. change. And, and we're talking, it's, that's a pro-life bill. Exactly, exactly. You know, for the pro-life. Basically to cover doula mm -hmm. services in tin care. Mm. Because doulas are needed. You right. know, everyone yeah. who has a baby is not educated. Now, right. you want us to have all these babies, right? Mm -hmm but we're not educated through the process of childbirth. We don't have right. advocates for us. And you can look at statistics show, this is not something we made up, it's not fake news. Mm -hmm. You can look, look at the statistics and the data as it relates to black maternal mortality and infant mortality, mm -hmm. especially in, in, in part of your district. Right, right, um, right. North has North. the highest yeah, rate yeah, of right. infant mortality. Mm -hmm. You can look at right. the numbers and see that it's needed. Mm -hmm. But the moment you say black, it's over with. Yeah, that's, and that, that's sad and unfortunate. And I was explaining, you know, when we were going through the budget process and we were working on getting uh, money put into the budget for uh, black micro businesses. And I was explaining uh, to, to the Speaker of the House then um, and the governor that, you know, these businesses, we have more micro businesses in our communities than anything for the most part. And Absolutely. if we were able to shore up and support these you know, it, it would raise the entire, it would lift the entire boat, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, but but apparently it was it fell on deaf ears. They didn't put it in the budget. Exactly. Right. And, mm -hmm. and that's irresponsible on their part. Mm -hmm. Shelby County has the highest tax base in the in the entire state. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, Shelby County also has mm -hmm. the highest black population. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the two kind of go together. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to invest in Tennessee, you invest in Shelby County. Mm -hmm. You invest in black businesses because right. that's what girds us for the rest of this mm -hmm. time. You right. know what I'm saying? So, right. We are the, we are the biggest call for, um, uh, resource that contributes to the Tennessee tax base, Shelby County, mm -hmm. Davidson County. That's where the money comes. And we actually subsidize all of these rural communities, all these people that are voting to kill us. It's interesting because they would cut off their heads, which is Shelby County and Davidson County or Nashville, in order to, to uh, spite the rest of their bodies. And, and it's sad, because, and it, this is something else that, and I, I hadn't talked to many people about this, but I will uh, mention this here on the show and, and talk to you about it to get your response. Uh, I was explaining to the uh, Commissioner of Tourism this week, and I explained this to uh, uh, the Speaker of the House. The uniqueness of Shelby County being that it's a, almost, what, 72% black or somewhere in that space, mm -hmm. and you know, or Memphis might be, and, and the uniqueness of that having this black oasis in the state of Tennessee is actually 
a gold mine. And when I say that, I, and, I, and I put it in terms like this, when, when, when you have European travelers that go to Jamaica, they are purchasing the black experience mm -hmm. in Jamaica, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's getting your hair braided, you know, uh, the culture, the food, the, food, the, music, the music, so yeah. on and so forth, right? And so I said, we are missing a golden opportunity in, in, in selling the black experience in Tennessee in Shelby County. Mm -hmm. But instead, you would rather step on it this unique, this unique go pot of gold that you got here, mm -hmm. you'd rather step on it and suppress it instead of um, uh, taking advantage of the opportunity that's there, which in turn would make a lot of black millionaires, but taking advantage of the opportunity that's there to target mm -hmm. your, out, your external customers, the people that you target through tourism, to come here and experience it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I don't know anybody that's taking a, a flight to Strawberry Plains or to, uh, right, right. to, to uh, mm -hmm. Williams, Rutherford County, wherever. Right. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know anybody that's flying there, but they're flying to MEM and BNA. They are. You hear me? They are. So they are. I think, you know, it's, it's incumbent upon our legislature to, to kind of take their head off every mm -hmm. now and then and think about the total well being mm -hmm. of the state, the total well being of its people, the total well being of our fiscal responsibility and think long term instead of what can I do now to spite mm -hmm. you all because we lost this election or because you mm -hmm. want us to take this bus mm -hmm. down or because Shelby County did this or did that. Like you have to think long term if you're serving people. Right. And you, can't, you can't have such an ego that you do exactly what you mm -hmm. said, cut off your head to spite your body or your nose, spite mm -hmm. your face, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. But you can't have such an ego that you don't serve the people. Right, right, yeah, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but that, that's been the case. It's been an antagonistical uh, relationship between the state capital and, and Shelby County. Oh, and it's been hell. Right. And, and, you know, but I can tell you this, you know, uh, we got folks that's up here fighting. And, and I hope that, you know, you guys will make sure you share this so everybody can see what Senator Robinson is doing up here also in, in this fight uh, to make sure that, that, that we're heard and that we're being represented. So let's shift real quick. Uh, your, your, your legislative agenda, your ideas, what would you like to see happen? You know, we got another year left in this, in this session, and, you know, what are some of the things that you want to see happen? Um, I want to see better um, access to health care mm -hmm. for our folks, mm -hmm. meaning things like doula services or mm -hmm. expansion of uh, coverage for our, uh, insulin. I had mm -hmm. a bill that would reduce the cost of insulin for diabetics because we mm -hmm. have a high diabetic community and high percentage community in uh, Memphis. Mm -hmm. I also want to see us focus more on our youth mm -hmm. and supporting our youth because right now we don't have the resources for them to take them past high school. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our high schools, we focus on are they uh, college ready? Are they prepared with the trade? Whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, their benchmark is. But after they graduate, then what? Right. Then right. what? What resources do they have? Mm -hmm. What resources do we have to support single parents, mm -hmm. mothers and fathers, mm -hmm. who are taking care of kids by themselves who need a little bit more help? Right. And so my agenda is focused solely on creating whole black families, mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. honest with you, because that's my community, that's the district that I serve. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also on fo focusing on making sure that our health care uh, is supported, that our businesses are supported. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a strong advocate of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and small businesses, and so I want to see black businesses do well. I want to see mm -hmm. more incubators in our uh, mm -hmm. low-income neighborhoods. I want to see more economic support come back to our communities. Yeah, and it's interesting because, you know, I say this every, every, every episode, you know, the uh, agenda of the Tennessee Black Caucus of State Legislature, uh, let me do that one again. Y'all heard that? <laughs> Look, the, the agenda of the Tennessee Black Caucus of State Legislators is um, health, education and how can we put money into the households of the people that we serve and as you see some a lot of what she talked about fits directly into that agenda as a matter of fact we ran some legislation to uh put some money into the households of the nurses that are operating here in the state oh, of yes. tennessee and they killed that too i mean come on now y'all look these these nurses and your nurse mm -hmm. yeah we got to acknowledge that these nurses in our state have gone above and beyond the call of duty to help us get through this pandemic, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things that we were trying to do, myself and Senator Robinson, we sponsored this legislation, was to give them some relief when it came to their licensing fees, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so yeah. actually mm -hmm. I had two bills. One mm -hmm. with you, Senator mm -hmm. Park, I'm sorry, Representative Parks, right. speaking to don't existence. Hey, speak don't, hey. don't to Senator, I'm just kidding. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, I had one piece of legislation with you, which mm -hmm. would basically, um, 
uh, eliminate some of the license mm -hmm. fees, and it had a sunset on mm -hmm. it, which was fair. Right. right. Um, you got to explain make what a sunset is. Okay, so sunset about. means it's, it's only good for a certain amount of time, and after right. that, it goes away. Right. Y'all gonna learn all the legal jargon today while we're on the show. We're yeah. Going. So it's only yeah. good for a certain amount of time, and it goes away. So basically, allowing um, the board of nursing to excuse nurses from paying licensure mm -hmm. fees, but it was also for respiratory therapists. Right. That's right. And right. let me just say, this wasn't just to serve nurses mm -hmm. because, it, and I wouldn't have benefited from it because that was one of the mm -hmm. questions that the media mm -hmm. asked me because mm -hmm. I haven't worked in a Tennessee facility. Right. Um. But it was basically to help our facilities be able to recruit, recruit. and retain yeah. nurses mm -hmm. because these people mm -hmm. are going on these COVID contracts, mm -hmm. we're going on nursing contracts, traveling away from mm -hmm. Tennessee to where our healthcare system is just boggled down right. and not able to meet the needs of the population because they don't have the staff to do so. Mm -hmm. And it was already a shortage, am I correct? Before Absolutely. That. It's still a, right. it's still mm -hmm. a shortage. Mm -hmm. You know, people are acting like COVID is gone. It's not gone. Mm -hmm. The numbers are going back mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. um, and because people are still not, uh, they don't have a lot of faith in the mm -hmm. vaccine. Mm -hmm. And we're still carrying on as if we found the solution and it's mm -hmm. over with. And so we're seeing the numbers spike back up. So we still need those healthcare workers to be mm -hmm. in our facilities. And so I thought it was a good idea for us to either waive their licensure mm -hmm. fees mm -hmm. or provide some type of stipend mm -hmm some type of stipend to uh, make sure that they felt like they were able to stay at home at least right. and that Tennessee was invested in them being mm -hmm. a nurse or a respiratory therapist in our in our state. You know, at first we started with everybody, the EMTs, mm -hmm. um, the paramedics, right. everybody. And right. then that didn't go well because, yeah. you know, what they'll do is craft a big old fiscal note, give okay. you a big old bill. There you go. Make sure you explain the fiscal note. Right. Fiscal right. note means how much is this going to cost the state. Right. And mm -hmm. so they'll make it seem like it's going to cost the state three hundred trillion dollars. Mm -hmm just to give these people $1,500, and it right. wasn't that way. And so we had to back it down just to make, make it more palatable for those people mm -hmm. who, who we had to present it to. Right, and so, and, and, and I wanted to bring that up because I want, pe I want people to make sure that they understand, our, our viewers rather, make sure they understand that when we set our agenda, we set our agenda for real. We mean, we mean what we say when we're, we're focused on health, education, and how do we put money into the household. And, and notice we did not call, we did not call that economic development. Mm -hmm. We said, how do we put money on the tables of the households? Make it real. Make it real. And I would not let anybody change the, that wording from our agenda because mm -hmm. I wanted it to be specific and intentional with what we're trying to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and, it, yeah, and so I want to I want to say this mm -hmm. uh, and the black caucus, you know, we we we, we read the comments. Mm -hmm. We hear the messages. We read the messages. Mm -hmm. We are here fighting. Mm -hmm. And I want people to understand that Everyone in this caucus is committed, is committed to the wellness, the success, and the well-being of black communities and black families. Mm -hmm. right. Now, the problem that we run into, even though we, we dance the dance and we, and we play the game, mm -hmm. we still don't have the help that we need to get mm -hmm. it done here at the state level. And so we have to start galvanizing people at home to make sure that we are doing what we have to do when it's time to get when mm -hmm. it's time to get to the voting polls so right yeah yeah absolutely. just want to bring that back well I, well I appreciate that and if you want to tell somebody direct to people your people directly that's your camera right there I noticed so my camera hey right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> right. yeah and so yeah and, and that's important to know you know um, we, we are look y'all man it's it's I woke up this morning after you know session, the end of session was last night and I woke up this morning feeling like I had been in a physical fight yep you know, yeah. after after these last couple of weeks, and you know, whoa out, honey, whoa right, out, <laughs> right, and 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 I was telling we got we got our freshman legislator, shout out to Tori Harris, and 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 the others, but I was telling Tori, if you think it was bad this year, wait till we get into election year Ooh, politics, baby, next year. honey, baby, Man, baby, we ain't seen nothing yet, so <laughs> yeah, but but y'all, you know, it's, it's it's important people gotta understand that you know everything that we do, it has an effect on your life. And, you know, and even with, with what we were fighting for, we were fighting for our lives yesterday in that, uh, we call it CRT bill, uh, but in the bill to... But even the chancery yeah, bill. Mm, the chancery bill. You, so, go ahead. Yeah, jump on in there. Babe, okay, excuse me. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get a little out of character. Hey, 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 no, or, or in character, actually. Look, <laughs> you know what I'm bad. saying. Baby. 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 Right. Hallelujah. But no, um, <laughs> even with the chancery mm -hmm. bill, so basically our body wanted to create a special court mm -hmm that would oversee any cases that were brought on behalf of um, cities. cities or County. municipalities mm -hmm. based on it being unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. Now we know, we know this legislature has a history of unconstitutional bills legislating through lawsuits, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so they wanted to create their own little chasm of, of, mm -hmm. of judges mm -hmm. 
who would be able to hear these cases and decide in their favor because they're t they even went so far as to ask the lady to be removed. Who was that? Yeah, the, Judge, the judge. Lyles. Judge Yeah, Judge Lyles to be removed because she decided a certain way on the mm -hmm, case. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so basically we didn't get our way. We're going to make another way. Mm -hmm. And let, let me let me break that down in layman's terms before yeah. we get too far into it. So, so basically uh, there were two um, lawsuits that came about. One was for vouchers. And then the other one was for people being able to do mail-in ballots for mm -hmm. voting because it was a pan because for we were COVID. in a pandemic. Now, the cities, or I'm sorry, the school districts, uh, Memphis, uh, Shelby County Schools and Nashville or Davidson County Schools filed a suit in regards to the vouchers and won, and won, right? And so they were mad about that. Then when it came to the voting, it was Earl Fisher and and a uh, shout out to Earl Fisher and and uh, Mulroy and uh, Mulroy and and uh, the, the, the ladies from here from we shouldn't have started calling names. We yeah, don't do that. We <laughs> but but there was a lawsuit in regards to uh, them trying to stop people from being able to mail in the ballots and you know to vote and there was a temporary win in it and there was a stay which means that people could vote until the appeals was done. And then the, the, that decision was overturned after the appeal, but people were able, able to vote by mail up until the appeal, till it was turned over. Mm -hmm. Now, they got mad about that because of the decision that the judge made. So, in order to uh, make sure that she could not make, or any of them, those judges couldn't make that decision again, the first thing they did was they tried to run a resolution to remove her mm -hmm. from the seat, which is dangerous. Despicable. And it's dangerous because now you're interfering with the judicial branch of government which could make those decisions partisan mm -hmm. and you you don't want that because you want the judges to be fair and impartial right so then when that didn't pass and i think that was just a red herring they came with something way worse two bills i call them sisters one was if an injunction is sought that and you cannot put a you cannot pause the action until the appeals process is over with. So let me give you an example. So let's say for instance, if we say that all women in Tennessee need to only make minimum wage, right? That's unconstitutional, right? And so, but if somebody files a lawsuit to get it overturned, the judge now cannot even pause it until after the whole appeal process is done. And we don't know how long that would take. Mm. Okay, so women will be stuck making minimum wage until the appeals process is mm -hmm. over with and hopefully overturned. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one bill. The second one was the one that Senator Robinson is talking about, where they wanted to create an entire new three judge panel. The judge is appointed by the governor for initially, and then they would, init they would have secondly had to have run across the state to be elected, which means that those voters in Shelby County, their vote would be watered down because all of the rest of the votes would have to come from the rest mm -hmm. of the state, from, from Shelby County to Kingsport, mm -hmm. Knoxville, Chattanooga, and all, Cock County, all these places in between. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so, and that's dangerous. That's extremely dangerous because then what they were doing is set, they were packing the courts, all of the things that they said they didn't want Joe Biden, our President Joe Biden to do, with the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. they were packing the courts in order to make the decisions go their way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very eloquently stated, but yes, that is mm -hmm. what happened. And uh, it's just dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous when you start to wield that type of power. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we serve in a very narrow function, which is the legislative function. Mm -hmm. So now you're stepping on over to the judicial function because you got all this power that you want to abuse mm -hmm. and further abuse it because you know you're going to do wrong. It's mm -hmm. basically, okay, I know, you know, some stuff that we're going to push is, is unconstitutional. Y'all going to sue us, but we need to make sure that when y'all sue us, you won't win. Right. Basically. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I, I find that, like, unbelievable mm -hmm. almost that people have the audacity to do so. But, but, but you know, you, you raise an important point that our viewers have to get. We have three branches of government. The executive branch, the legislative branch, which we are, right, and the judicial branch. The legislative branch, though, is the most, to, now, follow me, it's supposed to be a balance, but we make the rules. Mm -hmm. Who, the person, the, the person that makes the rules for the game is the most powerful person in the game. We make the rules. We make the rules for the, uh, for the judicial branch, and we make the rules for the executive branch. We make the laws. That's why I tell people that 
all elections are important. All of them are vitally important. But but when it comes to your state legislators, y'all y'all have this is where the power rides. Mm -hmm. This is where the where the power resides, mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. And so you got to make sure that you have the right people in place. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So hey, anything else you wanna you wanna tell our viewers or? Can I talk about Fun Fest? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I don't know. What you mean? We're going to cut it out anyway if you can't talk about it. So, well, I'm going to we'll, talk about it because right, you're right. on your live and I'm on mine. Right. But right. I'm sponsoring. We just want to make sure that we're not in violation because we're in, in, their, in, their, in their... It's not political. Backyard. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. I'm sponsoring a fun okay. fest okay. for the community. Okay, okay. all right. Okay, okay. I'm sponsoring a community <laughs> event. <laughs> I'm sponsoring a community event okay. on Juneteenth because okay. Juneteenth does exist. Okay. I'm sponsoring a community event on June 19th at Marquette Park, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. It is just a event that I do annually for our kids and for our families in Shelby County where we have resources for you all to come out to get information from, whether it's MIFA, Memphis Housing Authority, Memphis Police Department. We also give away um, groceries, gas, uh, food, fun. I give kids bikes, PS4s, basketball goals. We have a great time and I'm just inviting everybody out. If you need more information, you can find it on Facebook. Yeah, or, or email her office. And look, I'm going to pull up too. So, yeah, <laughs> what's, what's, what's the date times on that? June 19th. June 19th. 1 right. p.m. to 6 p.m. Marquette Park. 6 okay, Marquette Park. That's at Mount Mariah and Park Avenue. What y'all going to have? Where they have the Italian festival? What y'all going to have to eat? Uh, we have chicken, basically. Chicken. You know what? <laughs> you know, it's a chicken shortage, so I had to give them a chicken. But no, <laughs> we, have, we have chicken, we have hot dogs, hamburgers, we got uh, shaved ice, whatever I'm you just, want, baby. We I'm got just, it. We'll find I'm it for just, you. I'm just giving her a hard time, y'all. I'm just giving her a hard time. Yeah, hey, hey, y'all, this is our superstar state senator, Katrina Robinson. Thank give you. Her a round, put the round of applause in there. All right, all right. Yeah, Senator Robinson, thank you so much for being here. We greatly appreciate you. You're awesome. You're amazing. You really are. Super, you are super too. Thank you, thank you so, so much, much, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I'll get you that check for saying that in just a second. So hey, we hey. Go, so we go black. <laughs> he but, speak yeah. my language. Hey, there you go. Hey, <laughs> hey, I am State Representative Antonio Parkinson, and this has been the Tennessee Black Caucus Weekly. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you get it out to everyone that you know that you come in contact with. I think it's very important for people to get this information. And we'll see you back here this time next week. Bye. <laughs>